thank you. Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Now we're to discuss transforming rural maternal health through emergency transport initiative. Emergency Response Africa era and the Ogun state government have launched rural maternal health emergency transport transportation RMET initiative to reduce maternal mortality by improving emergency obstetric care access in rural areas. Using USSD and SMS-based systems, trained responders will provide free, rapid transport for pregnant women and infants, expanding the state's ambulance services. Starting in Odeda local government area, the program will eventually cover the whole state, supported by the Novartis Foundation and Global Fund. The initiative aims to save over 1,000 lives and create a sustainable model for emergency health care across Nigeria. Now joining me to discuss this and understand what our met is about is Folake Owojuni. She's the founder and CEO of ERA and that is Emergency Response Africa. Good morning. Thank Good you for morning. joining me. Thank you for having me. You look me. amazing. Thank you. You too. <laughs> All right. So we're talking about um, this collaboration between ERA and the Ogun State Government. Um, our myth, like I, I would like to call it, which is just transforming, you know, the maternal thing in Ogun State, especially when it comes to women, children, um, because we've seen that there's been a lot of mortality rate when it comes to that, especially women who go into labor, having to um, deliver their babies, and they don't have access to quality health care. But I think this collaboration came at the right time, but I want you to just um, tell us more about it. What inspired the collaboration in the first place? Yeah, thanks for that. I mean, you've already said it. I think Nigeria is a country that has one of the highest maternal mortality rates globally. Um, I think there's, and I, I don't want to misquote the stat, but let's just say that every single day we have hundreds of women that die in childbirth, mm. and there's really no reason for that. Um, you shouldn't have to die giving life, yeah. right? So um, that was already something that we knew was a challenge. Um, but the second thing is that transportation, access to emergency obstetric care in a healthcare facility, actually getting there has been one of the significant barriers for women. Mm -hmm. There's something called the three delays model in maternal mortality and you know it's the delay in deciding to seek care, the delay in actually getting to the care in the healthcare facility mm -hmm. and once you're in the facility, the delay in receiving what you need. Mm -hmm. That second one is the one that we're trying to solve. Okay, mm -hmm. you found out that you're, you know, you're at home, you're bleeding heavily, what do you do? You need to get to a healthcare facility, you won't believe that there are a lot of women who just transportation is a barrier. You end up, you know, you see, especially in the rural areas, women getting on motorcycles trying to wow. get to a healthcare center. Imagine heavily pregnant. Mm -hmm. And so the, the goal of the initiative is to address that. I happen to have met um, last year the Honorable Commissioner for Health, Dr. Tomi Koka, at an event outside of Nigeria, and we got talking about this, and that is a personal uh, pain point for her as an OBGYN. and she wants to reduce maternal mortality. Mm -hmm. So in the course of that conversation, it became quite clear that emergency transportation could be one of the tools yeah. for helping to reduce that and that's really what sparked this initiative. That is amazing because like you said, you shouldn't have to die while giving life Absolutely. and you know, this is something that you just have it abroad. You can call 911 and someone is there for you but we can't really say the same for Nigeria. Yep. So to see that um, ERA is doing this, is just amazing and I'm sure a lot of people will be able to benefit from this, especially women in the rural areas but I want to understand how it works so I know it's like USSD SMS base, SMS base how does that even work does it mean I can just be on my phone and if I need you know a, a response I just text a code or something and someone comes to get me yeah great question so what we've tried to do is really make sure that it's integrated into how the healthcare system already works mm. within Ugun State and so what we've done is there is a toll free um, actually a non toll free emergency number that's in use in Ogun State. Mm. Um, they have you know, kind of a command center that they've operated for quite a number of years. What we've done is we've actually brought this system into that and added the USSD as a tool for dispatching. Oh. Um, so when you think about dispatching technology typically, and even as Emergency Response Africa, the dispatch technology we have is internet-based. It requires you to have a strong connection so that you're sending data about the emergency case mm -hmm. to all the different 
stakeholders. But when you start to go into rural areas, those systems really start to struggle. Mm. And so for us, it was important to bring a solution that works regardless of whether the internet is working or not. not. Um, and that's where the USSD and SMS solution comes into play. And so what it does is it allows the dispatchers to send data about the call that has come in from the woman mm -hmm. to the closest available first responder within their community. Mm -hmm. That person has two primary jobs. The first job is transportation. So they're actually responsible for driving the ambulance tricycles, so mm -hmm. the, the, it's ambulance tricycles that are used, to the location where the woman is in order to pick her up and convey her to the hospital or mm -hmm. to the primary health care center. But the second job is support. So they are actually trained to be able to provide Which was support. Which is my next question. Yeah, mm -hmm. so they're trained to be able to provide support. And remember, these are community members. They're not necessarily health care workers. So they're not necessarily going to take delivery of the baby. And that's mm -hmm. not the goal. Their goal mm -hmm. is to get them to the health care facility. But at least, you know, at least they're able to... Um, you know, do that in a way that makes sure that the woman is supported throughout, um, you know, throughout that journey. Yeah, because I was even going to ask, you know, if they're trained for this, because when you were speaking about the delays, um, the three delays, I know the last one you mentioned was, you know, not even getting what you, what you require at that point. And we see that happen in our healthcare system in Nigeria. In fact, I think someone was, there was a video on social media and the lady, I think she's a comedian, she was just talking about how you should go to where you're pampered, how you should go to where you care, that most times the people in the healthcare system, they're not they don't even have that whole maternal thing mm -hmm. to like take care of you or help you out so seeing this is is a great way to ensure that the second one is already taken care of mm -hmm. now you've highlighted that they're not of course they're not healthcare workers but they have their own part to play mm -hmm. ensuring that you get there safely mm -hmm. but when you when you even get there um how is the Ogun state in partnership with Eric making sure that all three because I know we can we can say okay yes we're doing one mm -hmm. but to get that success yeah. that we want it has to be all three Absolutely. so how is the Ogun State and area partnering together to ensure that all three is being worked upon yeah I mean that's such a great question and you're right even though we say okay that's the you know that's the primary mm -hmm. problem that we're solving you really can't do it in isolation yeah so the first delay that delay in seeking care women have to know they have to be able to recognize the signs of an emergency mm -hmm. part of that is you know, even just the education they get during antenatal care. Mm -hmm. So one of the sub-objectives of this project is actually to increase antenatal care attendance because we know already there's research that shows if you can get a woman to attend at least four antenatal care appointments, she's much more likely to have a safer uh, pregnancy and delivery. Mm -hmm. And so the first step is go to antenatal will actually help you to get there so there's, there's a non-emergency transportation part of this mm. which allows them to be able to access that an, antenatal care the second part and that's the last part around you know when they get to the healthcare facility what are they actually going to experience yeah. that partnership is key so you don't want an, a transportation system that operates in isolation and that's why the technology is also important communicating with the healthcare facilities in advance oh we're bringing so so and so to you mm -hmm. this is you know the current stage of their pregnancy these are the symptoms that they're experiencing so that they as the healthcare facility can be prepared and the, the other part is it's not every place that you will take a person to mm. somebody who is already clearly experiencing symptoms that will require advanced care does not necessarily need to go to the primary health care yeah. center they should actually be going straight to a general hospital. hospital and so that's part of that dispatch process and protocol is really triaging the situation to say that okay you know what this person can actually go and deliver safely at the primary health care center mm -hmm. or this person needs to get straight to the hospital and then organize that so all those three really do work together yeah um, and that education part is is definitely key as yeah. well so we've seen lots of initiatives come up we've even seen HMOs who offer similar things but how does this system um, how, how is this model different mm. what is that um, what is that advantage that you get with the RMET yeah, so I think, um, you know, like I said before, we really want to embed this into existing healthcare systems. Mm -hmm. And one of the problems that happens in healthcare and development generally is you have things that work in isolation. Mm -hmm. And then eventually, you know, for whatever reason, they stop working and the people are worse off or nothing has really changed. We don't want that with this program. And there's still, you know, the question of sustainability. There's yes. a lot that still needs to be figured out. But we don't want that. And that's why this program is very much seen 
um, by the Commissioner for Health as well as the leaders within the Ministry of Health as a part of the broader healthcare system. The good news is the federal government has also made a lot of great steps um, in terms of providing a framework for the financing of emergency medical transportation, mm. especially as it relates to maternal health care. So I think there's a good opportunity for this to actually be sustained mm -hmm. both locally within the state and also at a federal level mm -hmm. just because those mechanisms are being put in place. So it's really not about this trying to be different or separate or stand mm -hmm. apart. It should actually fit within the framework of the existing healthcare system. Yeah. And, and that's why even within Ogun State, we're partnered with, they have this uh, Ibidero program mm -hmm. that is actually insurance but for pregnant women, supporting mm -hmm. them throughout their journey. And this is really a fundamental part of that. That's great. And I, I think it's a we thing. It's not just, uh, oh, I'm doing my own part and you do your own part. It's everybody coming together to say we want to transform the healthcare system. And I think I'm going to ask, why Ogun State first? Like, you know, most times you, when you hear of initiatives like this, you think of the bigger, you know, the bigger picture. And you're like, we want it everywhere. Yeah. But why was it Ogun State in particular? How come we're starting with Ogun State? Yeah. And I hope that, you know, it would go over to other states as well. But yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So, I mean, I, I will say that we've been privileged to work with a couple of different states uh, for now. Um, but Ogun State came up particularly because I mentioned the meeting that I had, yes. had with the commissioner, you know, kind of at a different time. And I saw the passion that she had for reducing maternal mortality. And I mm -hmm. knew that there was a strong connection between the solution we offered mm -hmm. and the problem that she was trying to solve. But alongside that, we came across an opportunity sponsored by the Novartis Foundation and the Global Fund um, to propose a solution that they could actually help to pilot and mm. initiate. Um, and it just seemed like a really, really good fit. And by the time we engaged with the Commissioner for Health and with the stakeholders at the Ministry of Health, um, it became quite clear that they were a good platform mm -hmm. um, to be able to start this. And as you know, we're starting in one local government area, yeah. but certainly the vision is that this can expand to all the other local governments government areas mm -hmm. and even beyond Ogun State as well. So what's the future? Well, I mean, that remains to be seen. Um, but, you know, certainly what we hope um, is that this is something that can be widely adopted. Mm -hmm. The reality is it's needed. It's very, very clearly needed. And not just um, in the rural areas, also in the urban areas as well. Yeah. Um, anywhere where transportation might be a barrier. And let's remember that transportation is not just about, oh, I don't have a car mm -hmm. or there's no taxi available. Transportation is, can you receive care on the way in the mm -hmm. cases where you need it? Or can you get to the right health care facility? facility, not the wrong one, mm -hmm. or can we ensure that in the process of getting there, you are able to do that quickly because there's traffic, there are people mm -hmm. blocking the road, mm -hmm. even just having, sometimes just having a siren can make all of the difference, yeah. right? So those are the things that we hope to be able to see scale beyond, you know, other local government in Ogun State into other states. I mean, we do work with Edo State, we work with River State, we've had uh, uh, engagement with Ekiti State in the past. We would love to see all of those states and many more have this program and see it actually working and delivering the results. That's amazing. Well, thank you so much. Thank, um, you. And thank you for the work you're doing. We appreciate it. I'm sure a lot of people would be like, oh my God, she's so amazing. <laughs> I love what the um, what the era, what era and Ogun State is doing. And hopefully this transforms the healthcare system in Nigeria. This just doesn't work for Ogun State. It works, you know, at a federal level. And we want that people are able to gain access to quality um, health care and nobody should have to lose their life you know when giving birth and yeah. even infants don't have to die Absolutely. just coming into the world so we hope that there is a holistic approach to this and more people are trying to you know partner with with platforms like yours yeah. to ensure that we transform the healthcare system in Nigeria. Thank you so much Thank once you. again. Thank you. So much. All right, well, we're speaking with Folake Oluduni, Oluduni, <laughs> I beg your pardon, and she's the CEO for EWA. We've just been talking transforming rural and maternal health through emergency transport initiative. This is where we have to wrap it up on the show today. Thank you so much for having the breakfast with me. My name is Rume Paulsen. I'll see you again tomorrow. Have a great day and good morning.